to the complaints of our constituents, the oversight of government agencies, and the need for possible legislation. Stay right here with us, folks, on News Now from Fox, taking a quick two-minute break. Um, Senator Mastrano, I believe you want to introduce our first witness for 15 minutes. And we will hold to the representatives and senators, so you understand, we will hold all of our questions until the conclusion of the sixth panel. I would just simply say, welcome to America's mayor. Thank you, Mayor Giuliani, for being here. Representatives, Senator Mastroianni, and uh, all the distinguished members of the legislature of Pennsylvania, we are very, very honored and very appreciative that you are giving us an opportunity to be heard, which we've been denied almost uniformly by the media and by uh, legislatures elsewhere. Uh, all, we, all, we, all we ask is that you listen to the facts that we're presenting and then evaluate it. Um, I can't help but note that we're doing it here in Gettysburg. Uh, over 156 years ago, the fate of our country hung in the balance right, right here on this hollowed ground uh, for three rel relentless days of bloody close combat between uh, two armies that lost over 50,000 casualties. The fate of our republic was really uh, decided that we'd be one nation, one union, one government sharing uh, values that are enormously important to us. And uh, I don't want to overstate it, but I do believe that those values are at stake, not only in this election, but in the way this election was conducted and in what we're going to do about it. Because if we allow elections in the future to be conducted the way this election was conducted, we will have lost our democracy, our representative democracy. Uh, during the course of this election, we've come pretty close to lo losing our right of free speech. Uh, there's been censorship that I've never seen before uh, of an incredible nature by big tech, big networks, big companies. Uh, they only allow one side to be heard and they refuse to allow the other side to be heard. It's almost as if they're afraid the American people, if they should learn these facts, will um, find out just who they are and what they're about. Uh, this uh, voter fraud that took place, which as you will see from the witnesses that we call, had several dimensions to it, several different ways in which it was done. The most, the, the most dangerous thing is, it is very, very similar in at least six states that we've been able to study. In other words, what we're going to describe to you with these witnesses happened in roughly the same way in Michigan, Wisconsin, Nevada, Arizona, and Georgia. Primary uh, device with a mail-in ballots. You know there was a fierce debate over whether we should have mail-in ballots in the first place. Uh, many scholars, many uh, experts always felt that mail-in ballots were very dangerous because they're very easy uh, to forge it leads to more defrauding. Uh, we were warned by uh, Justice Souter, among others. We were warned by President Jimmy Carter and former Secretary of State James Baker in a report that they did on how to make elections more secure. They warned us that the one thing to do is do not go to general mail-in voting because every place it's been used, it's led to tremendous fraud. And uh, that was reiterated, believe it or not, in an article in the New York Times in 2012, an article they have now forgotten they wrote, uh, that explained the same, the same thing. Um, and I think what you're going to find as you study your mail-in ballot procedure here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and then in the six other places, uh, this, this was a terrible mistake. And it allowed the, the leadership of a party that had become pretty expert at voter fraud to really go wild. So the witnesses we present are going to first show you 
that in the case of Philadelphia and in the case of Allegheny County and one or two other counties, the mail-in ballots that were received uh, were not inspected at all by any Republican. They were hidden from Republicans. Uh, in the case of Philadelphia and Allegheny County, I can't be absolutely certain, but I do believe the witnesses will show that a Republican never got to see a single ballot. Now, you know how important that is to determining whether it is a valid ballot or not. There's only one time you get to do that, and that's when you separate the envelope that possesses the verifying information from the ballot. The moment you separate them, you can no longer verify. You can't go back and recount. You can't go back and check paper ballot against uh, the machine ballot because it's a private ballot. It's an anonymous ballot. We want to keep it that way. The only thing that identifies it is that outer envelope. At that moment, when they're separated, gone forever. That's the moment at which inspections have been allowed time immemorial in America, Pennsylvania, all of our other 49 states. Several of the witnesses here have been doing this for 20 or 30 years. They've never heard of a situation in which a mail-in ballot was just put in without allowing a Republican, a Democrat, even third party members to take one look at it and object to it for the very reason that it's too prone to fraud. Think about this. In your state, Republicans were uniformly not allowed, kept out, put in shoots like they were cows to keep them away from seeing these ballots. Never happened before. Not only that, the same thing was done in Michigan, the same thing was done in Wisconsin, and on and on and on. What's the chance that on the morning of November 3rd or 4th, when they started the count, that in each one of those places, the Democrat leadership of these highly controlled Democrat cities that have some history for corruption, and in the case of Philadelphia, a long history of voter fraud, I could show you the convictions. I don't, I don't think I have to. Uh, what, are the, what are the odds that they're all going to wake up with the same idea? After years and years of always examining together absentee ballots, all of a sudden, in a year in which we have a couple million of them per state, we're not going to allow any Republicans to see them. Uh, the person in Philly figures that out. Pittsburgh, Detroit, Milwaukee, Las Vegas, Nevada. Or is it more likely that this was a common plan? that maybe started with the whole idea of having mail ballots because it gives you a much wider range to cheat. When you had just a small number of absentee ballots, like 400,000, you have a certain range that you can cheat. When you have 250 or 2.5 million, you have a much bigger range to do that. So when you hear that testimony about not being allowed to see the ballot, you have to understand it's much more important than just that individual just that individual uh, ballot. On election night, when I went to sleep, maybe when you did, uh, President Trump was leading in your state by somewhere around 700 to 800,000 votes, depending on when you went to sleep. That's a huge number of votes. 65% of the vote had been cast. Under normal circumstances, like if this were a fair media, your state would have been called for Trump. I mean, Virginia was called with 10% of the vote. It turned out to be separated by 1%. I think we may have actually won Virginia. But that's another battle. Michigan, we were ahead by 300,000 votes. Wisconsin, more. Georgia, we were down to 90% and ahead. What are the odds that they all switched overnight? <laughs> they just switched by the next day. I think you're going to see how that, I think you're going to see how that happened. And I think there are a couple of statistics that you have to really closely, you have to really closely look at. I'll just mention them and then we'll move on to the witnesses. We have calculated and the evidence will show that there were 682,770 mail-in ballots that were entered into your votes in just Allegheny County and in Philadelphia that were not observed by any single Republican. Those ballots could have all been for Joe Biden. They could have all been for 
someone else. They could have had no identifying data. They could have been from the same person. There could have been multiples of them. There could have been no name on them. We have no idea if that's true. Uh, and it will be very hard now to kind of put them together. We could ask, and you could subpoena, all of the outer envelopes. It'd be very interesting to take a look at the 682,770 outer envelopes. It'd be very interesting if they were kept. And it'd be very interesting to see how many of them weren't filled out. But in any event, under the law of your state, which is set by you, those ballots are illegal. Uh, the judge mistakenly, in his opinion, said that we want to disenfranchise six million people. We don't want to disenfranchise anyone. We want to, we want to disqualify 682,000 votes so that 74 million people are not disenfranchised. Because that's, that's what happened by the cheating that went on here. I'll give you one other enormously puzzling statistic. You sent out in the state of uh, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania 1,823, 148 absentee or mail-in ballots. You received back 1.4 million approximately. However, in the count for president, you counted 2.5 million. I don't know what accounts for that 700,000 difference between the number of ballots you sent out and the number of ballots that ended up in the count. That number, 2,589,242, was on your government website until yesterday. And yesterday it was removed without explanation. I'm going to be very interested in hearing what the explanation is. And I can't imagine you could possibly certify without knowing the explanation of that, as well as the explanation to the 22,686 mail-in ballots that were returned on the day they were mailed. That's a trick. How about uh, they were returned? How about 32,591 were returned the day after they were mailed? Another 20,000 were returned <laughs> before they were mailed. <laughs> of course, this is only, this is, I think this is a kind of a low count, and I, I guess the crooks in Philadelphia are disappointed in this. They only submitted 8,021 ballots from dead people, mail-in ballots for dead people. It's probably easier for dead people to submit mail-in ballots than it is to vote in person. You, you had about 30,000 of those. We're checking the records of the cemeteries around Philadelphia. <laughs> you have 4,984 mail-in ballots that were never requested, and on and on and on and on. Your, uh, uh, your election, because of these two counties and maybe one other, is a sham. It's a disgrace <laughs> to your state. And finally, I, I don't need to remind you of this. I think I need to remind America of this. Uh, the election for the President of the United States is not run by the governor of your state. It's not run by your election commissioner. The United States Constitution makes it clear who has the responsibility for running this election. Article 2, Section 1, Clause 2 of our Constitution. It doesn't say that ABC gets to call the winner or CNN, it says, each state shall appoint in such manner as the legislature thereof may direct a number of electors. It's the state legislature that controls this process. It's your power. It's your responsibility. And uh, I think you, I think you know, and you have to convince the rest of your members, Republican and Democrat, they owe that to the people of your state, and they owe that to the people of the United States. Amen. Because if this happens without consequence, if they can just enter 600,000 some odd mail-in ballots without allowing a single Republican to, to view it, what's to say that next time they won't do a million or two million? I know crooks really well. You give them an inch and they take a mile, and you give them a mile and they take your whole country. So now we'll proceed with the witnesses.
Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Giuliani. I've been informed that we have also been joined on Zoom by Senator Kristen Phillips Hill, uh, Representative Don Kiefer, Representative Barb Gleim from Central Pennsylvania, Representative Darrell Metcalf from Butler County, and Senator Langerhoek from uh, Johnstown area. Uh, Senator Mastriano, would you like to uh, introduce our next uh, panel uh, for the, uh, uh, looks to me like uh, several people for uh, 15 minutes 